Hello, it is Thursday, August 12th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Thursday puzzle, so we are ready for the challenge to ramp up a bit more noticeably, I think, than it has been to this point in the week. I always think of the Thursday puzzle as the first hard puzzle. Obviously, any any puzzle on any day can be hard for a given person because it might you might simply encounter some bits of knowledge you don't know, some vocabulary that's unfamiliar to you. But Thursday, I think, if you sort of averaged it all out, that's where it starts to get tricky. And I don't think I have any immediate follow-ups from yesterday, although uh, in keeping with um, my mentioning of people who have been uh, solving the puzzle for the first time and mentioning it, I did see one person who said this was the first crossword puzzle they completed, although they needed some help yesterday, I mean, and another person say it was not the first puzzle they'd completed without help, but it was the first Wednesday they'd completed without help. So presumably they are moving through the week slowly. And Thursday is also, I remember Thursday was the the day that when I started to be able to solve a Thursday straight through without needing to look anything up or get any help, that felt like a line that I had crossed. I do remember, I do remember that. I don't know when, I don't remember when that would have been, but I remember that sensation. And so uh, if you are newish to the crossword puzzle and you are not at that point yet, you definitely can get there. And maybe we'll take one step closer on that journey with today's crossword by Jake Halperin, edited as always by Will Shorts. Let's get on with it. Why delay? We've got a Thursday puzzle to solve. We shouldn't waste any more time. Are we ready to get started? Okay. So an alternative to a ding dong. A ding dong, I think, is much like the Twinkie that was referenced, I think, in the puzzle the other day is a um, sort of commercial confection, a, a baked good that you get in a convenience store or a supermarket. Uh, and a, a ho-ho, I think, would be another one of those that would fit in four letters. Sound of a snicker. Uh, this came up recently as well with a different different clue, but a similar but clue essentially meant the same thing, which is heh, 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 heh. what that's getting at. Mr. Holland's Blank, 1995 film for which Rich, Richard Dreyfuss received a Best Actor nomination. Um, I've not seen the film, actually, but I have read the book. It's Mr. Holland's Opus. Great Pains. Interesting. So what, what uh, it's got a question mark, and it almost doesn't need a question mark because of the way great is spelled. Obviously, if you said great, great pains aloud, someone would assume you meant great, G-R-E-A-T, considerable pains. But uh, we see that it is spelled like uh, a great, meaning a sort of, you know, a mesh, basically something that lets something through uh, while blocking large objects. And I, what would a great pain be? I don't know, something about burning yourself or, I don't know, let's not dwell on it for the time being. To be remembered for all time. Well, we all, we all could aspire to be epic, to be remembered for all time. Perhaps one day I'll have a truly epic crossword solve. <laughs> we'll cement my legacy in the annals of history. Probably not. Uh, it's found near a trap. Um... Could be hole. It could be a golf trap. Could be a golf. It could be a hole in a golf course. Golf trap. But I'm not really sure yet. Uh, sped. Um. Well, sped. We you know went quickly. It could be raced. Let's look at some crosses here. Obama's Secret Service code name. Oh boy. Um. This will be obvious once we see it. But I don't remember which one he was. They all have names like vigilant and you know, resolute and things like that. I don't, I don't know which one his was. Uh, shade akin to turquoise. Could it be teal or aqua perhaps? Preposterous. Oh, I feel as though this could be a few things. I'm going to skip it for now. Lead in to vocal. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to head back to the, let's just keep marching through the acrosses and see how we do. Sister publication of Jet Magazine. Um, could this be Ebony Magazine? 
two shades of black, sort of black culture magazines or fashion. Um, help wanted. APBs, all points bulletins with police. I'm not really sure what that's getting at. Um, computer processor parts. Not sure offhand. Figure in international relations. Um, this is sort of funny. It, I mean, <laughs> it could be Anon, Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the UN, which is funny because I oddly, sort of weirdly brought him up the other day, not in the context of a crossword clue. So maybe my brain is just predisposed down that direction. Let's for fun put it in and see what happens. Part of ABS, abbreviation. So ABS stands for anti-lock brake system, and it's a safety feature in cars. Uh, I mean, the only one of those that would work here would be A. But I don't really know that three letters would be an abbreviation for anti-lock. At least I think that's what ABS stands for. Yeah, maybe it's not an I wanted it to be a non because that would have been a fun coincidence, but maybe, and maybe it is, but but I don't think so. Actor Laurie of House, this would be Hugh Laurie. Golf great Lorena, shockingly, I don't know this sports answer. Great pains. It looks like high, doesn't it? Oft wished upon sighting. A uh, shooting star, presumably, when you wish upon a star. No. And then that's connected to this 40 across. So we've got some sort of theme going here. What each asterisk clue's answer does to correct a misnomer. Okay, so this might be something that it, that is shooting star, but is there's something going on with the theme that we can't see yet. And... So we've got several of these answers. We'll get to them when we, when, the, when we have more crosses, perhaps. When doubled, good one. When doubled, so this is something that you would say to someone as um, a congratulations, I suppose. I don't know, pip, pip, that doesn't seem right. Let's keep going. Heart chart for short. Oh no. <laughs> Is this EEG, EKG, ECG, ECG? Well, they all seem to end in G, don't they? Um, and I never remember which is which. And e we now know from a crossword recently that ECG and EKG are the, actually the same thing. Um, organization with gym memberships. That certainly seems like it could be quite a few organizations, doesn't it? YMCA, perhaps? which would fit ECG. Not completely confident, but let's put it in for now. Serving with dal makhani. Um, well, that's an Indian dish. You might eat that with some naan. Could be naan. Very good dish. I've made it a few times. Common typo for an exclamation point. Common typo for an exclamation point. What is that getting at? Sprout. Um, could it be a bud? That doesn't seem quite accurate. Well, maybe though. A globe could be an orb. Oops. What am I doing with these slashes? Could it be bud? And then here we have three quotation marks. What on earth is that? School with a campus in Narragansett. Well, I don't know what this is, and unfortunately, we already have the most obvious letter, the U for university through crosses. Author Gaiman, Neil Gaiman, does he spell it this way? I think so. Obama's secret surface code name. What sort of Robert Ludlum sounding word could we put in here? Ugh. Passed out. Um, well, it could be passed out meaning fell asleep or went unconscious, could also be passed out in, in terms of um, handing out materials or something. It could be meted, although you usually say meted out, not just meted. And the out in passed out means out won't be 
in the thing we put in here because it's the out is contained in the answer. So whatever we whatever we put in this uh, in this fill here should mean passed out. It shouldn't just mean passed. If you follow me, I know that's slightly the way I've said it was slightly confusing. Uh, with fifty one across, something to quote read. There's no additional hint there. Let's keep looking. In the main, uh, this could be a main meaning the C is in Spanish main. Maybe it's at C. One in a pod. Uh, well, I don't know that I necessarily would have immediately gotten this without that cross, but with the cross, it looks like it could be okra, pods of okra. Good stuff. Could be neat. Could be as simple as that. Neat crossword. Common typo for an exclamation point. Oh, I see what this means. One. In other words, um, one could be trying to type an exclamation point and not hold down the shift on the keyboard and you end up with the numeral one. I think that's what that, that means. Hazard in maritime tra travel. What is that getting at? You'd want to say bird or something like that. I mean, this could be wrong. Okra. Let's keep looking around. Kind of market. Open market. That certainly doesn't make this hazard and maritime travel any more obvious. French greeting. Well, it's not bonjour, it's not salut. Uh, it could be allo. That's what I think I think you say that when you pick up the phone in French. Allo? Kind of market. I mean, I'm not very confident about that. Stretch of the red carpet. Um, I think this is sort of cleverly alluding. So maybe it is allo. Um, stretch of the red carpet, I think, is cutely alluding with the question mark to a limousine. In other words, a stretch limousine, which will pull up at the red carpet. Dynamism. Um, it could be vim, as in vim and vigor. First name in surrealism. Ah, maybe it is vim, because this... Okay, so just to recap, I've mentioned this before, but when you see first name in a crossword, what that's getting at, obviously, is a preeminent name, a, a very significant uh, person in the field being listed. And that is true, that is accurate. But what is usually also being suggested simultaneously is that it's referring to their given name, their first name. Um, it doesn't have to be, it would still be accurate. So this, this in this case is um, Salvador, as in Salvador Dali. And I, I think first name in sur surrealism would still be a valid clue for Dali if, if this were four letters and it fit. Um, but when you see that first name, remember you're looking usually both for a preeminent name and also a given name. So dynamism, I suppose, is vim, as in vim and vigor. And I don't know what these three quotation marks, I don't know what that's referring to. Uh, let's keep looking. Uh, let's, oh, sorry, let's go back to the cross, the, the uh, crosses here. Uh, word with sport or spirit. Could be team, team sport or team spirit. You might have team spirit when playing a team sport. Tour de France units, abbreviations, uh, kilometers, I assume. That would be the abbreviation in a in a Tour de France bicycle race, yeah. Jose Blank, Frozen Foods brand, don't know. Keep coming back to these quotation marks. What is this? Something to, I assume. Not a lot of words that end in T-O. And not a lot of words that begin with O-M, unless it's omelet or something, which doesn't doesn't make much sense here. So, not seeing it anyway. Let's let's move on. One might stand on a table. Not sure. It was once sold medically under the commercial name Delicid. Could it be LSD? I mean, the the letters LSD are in that word, so you could see sort of trying to play around with the letters LSD to create a, a brand name. Let's try it and see. 
Leave inconspicuously without. Dip out, maybe, as, as of a party. If you're not well, you're ill, so maybe it is dip out. Dip out sort of, to me, is more of a connotation of leaving temporarily, but maybe that's wrong. You know, if I said I'm going to just dip out, well, maybe that does mean leave, but I, I think I would usually use that to mean I'll be back soon, but, you know, maybe not. Uh, passed out, we saw that. Could be meted. Spice quantities. So I just sort of looked at that to confirm or deny my guess of meted, which I wasn't very confident about to begin with, and I'm especially not now. I suspect spice quantities. It could be teaspoons. I just say because of the length of the clue. Could be grams, but that doesn't fit. One might stand on a table. What is this getting at? Limp? No, it doesn't make any sense. Leap. One might stand on a table. A lamp? I mean, you could have a lamp on a table. That's pretty generic. I don't, is that particular to standing on tables? Home to the oldest continuously functioning university in the Americas since 1551. Wow. I don't know, but that's really interesting, and I'll be I'll be curious to know. A great time informally. It would be a gas. Uh, superficially, that'll be that'll be very obvious with a with a cross or two. Let's keep going for now. Symbol of Australia. We still don't know what's going on with this theme, do we? Let's move on for the time being. Tech review site. I think this actually came up the other day and is CNET channel with the slogan "Boom." Well, I've never seen this slogan before as applied to a, a, what I assume is a television channel, but based on the boom and the fact that I know that TNT, right, is a television channel, boom, TNT, and explosive, that makes sense. So let's say it's that. Some summer deliveries. Um, could be deliveries as in things that arrive at your house. Could be deliveries as in newborns. Is there a particular, particular animal that tends to deliver babies in the summer? I don't know. Drill, for instance. Let's just go back to the crosses here. Repeti repetitive musical form. Um, this is a rondo, I think. That's um, just a bit of musical trivia. There's not... I don't think of this as a necessarily something that comes up in the crossword constantly or anything, but that is a term you could know if it happens to come up in the crossword. A rondo. Actress, TV host, Palmer. Wrong person to be asking about this. Stand out in one's field. I mean, I suppose it could be getting at a sort of scarecrow or something, uh, punnily, but it called it could also be straightforward. Um, it doesn't have a question mark. It could just be getting at a uh, a preeminent name, a first name, if you will, but without the first name part, probably. Lawful, uh, let's see, well, lawful would be licit, as in other words, the opposite of illicit. We don't use licit very often. We use illicit all the time, but not licit so much. It's funny. I wonder why. Stand out in one's field. Uh, so it could be an icon. If you're an icon, you really are a standout in your field. Some summer deliveries. Well, it is plural, so it could end in an S. I mean, it could be an adjective. In other words, some summer deliveries could be described this way, and that would be an adjective that wouldn't need to be plural um, or wouldn't need to have an S. Um, a drill, for instance. I see a drill, a test. So a fire drill, for instance, is sort of a test of uh, process, your ability to engage in that process. Superficially, I see. So um, at a glance, superficially, at a glance. At a glance, I may appear to be an excellent crossword solver, but then uh, I do a Thursday and I'm 17 minutes in and I'm, what, not even halfway? Symbol of Australia. Some summer deliveries. I'm sort of lingering on this because I feel like it should be quite obvious, shouldn't it? What is this? Oh, 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 I see. Sorry. So when I said uh, giving, when I made an allusion to giving birth, I limited it to animals, which I shouldn't have because it refers to people and it refers to Leos. Um, and I couldn't tell you what months. I, I don't really know the uh, astrological birth months or whatever it is, periods, I guess they're not specifically months, but it must be Leo's because that fits. 
Symbol of Australia. Could this be marsupial? A koala is a marsupial, right? And that's very associated with Australia. So what was this? What did this say again? What each asterisk clue's answer does to correct a misnomer. So could this be something like shooting and then instead of star, it's something else and whatever it is, is sort of the way that it relates to star is explained here. I suspect that's the case. Uh, but I'm not seeing it yet. Let's see if we can get anything out of these um, out of these crosses. Or actually, have we even finished the the across clues yet? I don't think we have. So let's keep going. Or maybe we have fawn look alike. Um, so this is um, uh, mythological, and I think is referring to a satyr, the um, like Pan, for instance. Um, what is it, a sort of goat man sort of creature? Blank Bird, 2017 film Lady Bird. I never saw Lady Bird, um, but it looked good. Needle. Could be a could be point. If it's if it's referring to a physical noun, could also be referring to uh, to the verb to needle somebody. Let's try point and see what happens. This kind of looks like it. it could almost be koala marsupial. What is that getting at? This point could be that would that would mean point is wrong. So let's keep looking around. C thirty four across right. With fifty one across, something to read. Not sure yet. Let's just let's keep looking around here. Headwear made from Jippy Joppa fibers. Not sure. I'm worried this whole theme is going to hold me up for a while as I don't see the answer. Warmer in the winter. So because of the way this ends, I assume that this is not, not an adjective, not, not doesn't mean more warm, but rather is something that warms. This is a noun. It is a warmer. Cocoa, hot cocoa, right. So this does look like koala marsupial, doesn't it? What would that be getting at exactly? Maybe not. Michelle, who is FIFA's female player of the century. Ah, oh, too many sports. Um, uh-oh, this is a dangerous area down here now, isn't it? Sorry, if you're you're probably probably quite a few of you are seeing a number of things I've not seen yet. Kind of market. Flea market. Sorry. So, yeah, I think okra must be wrong over here. A maritime hazard in maritime travel must be a reef, right? So, one in a pod. Oh, orca. Wow, clever. Very clever. Okra and orca and <laughs> orca are sort of just if you transposed, I mean, the, the you, you'd have to change the c to a k, but the actual sounds, the c and k sound are the same in these cases. And if you flip them, they uh, transition, but they, they sort of transfer between the words okra and orca, and orca um, each of which is a plausible answer, I think, to one in a pod. Maybe not. Maybe okra is a pod and is not in a pod. That probably I, I um, maybe it might well be a bit of, of intentional misdirection, but, but orca is more fitting than okra. And um, a pod of whales is the collective sort of collective noun for a, I don't know, a group or a family. I'm not sure exactly, but pod of whales is, is what that's referring to. And or an orca is a whale. Uh, very well, very nice over there. So let's see. Great pains. Hi. I'm sorry. Again, this is probably something I should really be seeing. Great. What is the, what is a, Boy, I'm so. <laughs> feels like it should be. So, where would a great be? I keep thinking like on a barbecue. I keep thinking on a sort of barbecue or something and you'd burn yourself, but I don't think it's that. I think it's a great. Okay, I see it now. 
it's on a uh, a street. You're walking on a street, and again, I was thinking of pains in the wrong way. I was thinking of pains as in physical um, sensation of pain, aching, something like that, which it isn't. It means pains. It actually is does mean pain in the sense of, oh boy, what a pain. That really is frustrating. And this is high heels. Your heel could get caught in a grate on the street, and that would be a real pain. So that was another very clever clue, but boy, it really, uh, really got me caught up for a while. When doubled, good one. Ah, all right. And I see why I didn't get this before as well. This means good one in a sarcastic sense. Good one, not good one. And so it's har har. Okay, so we've 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 made some progress on that uh, corner over there. That's good. Um. What each asterisk clue's answer does to correct a misnomer. Calls it like it is. So, oh, I see, I see. So, I, I think I see what this is getting at. So, uh, when I referred to a koala earlier, what I didn't say was koala bear, which is a common, it's just a, a common sort of informal name for the koala, I suppose. And I think as people often point out to correct a misnomer, as is indicated in this answer, um, a koala is not a bear. It is a marsupial, which is something else, a different thing that is not a bear. Uh, and so I guess what this is doing is it's taking common phrases and it's correcting the uh, sort of informal colloquial version of the phrase. So instead of a shooting star, this is presumably a shooting meteor, which is in fact what a shooting star is. Even though we call it a star, it's not a star. Oh boy, I think I have something in my eye. Ooh, it's going to be bad. Let's see how quickly I can finish this crossword and go get that out. Um, Obama's Secret Service code name, Delegate? That seems pretty boring for a president. Renegade? It must be Renegade. Um, boy, this is, this is not great. What's going on with my eye here? Help wanted. A bet? As in to aid and a bet? I'm not sure how that fits exactly. Ooh. Computer processor parts. Well, it probably ends in an S, doesn't it? Oops. Sorry, I can barely see here at this point. This is dangerous. Part of ABS. Okay, well, anti-lock break system. This is this will be the system part. Some textile specialists. Um, some people who work on textiles might dye the textiles. They are dyers. Figure in international relations. Oh, an envoy. More more straightforward than what I was doing before with Kofi Annan. I just really wanted it to be Kofi Annan because of the Kofi reference the other day. I was referring to the donation site where I collect donations, which is K-O-F-I. And uh, I generally pronounce that coffee. And then I watched a video on their website and they pronounced it Kofi. So I said Kofi and it was weird because I kept thinking of Kofi Annan. And then someone pointed out in a comment, I'm sorry that I'm not crediting your name because I don't have it to hand, but they pointed out that it's probably a clever pun on both coffee. In other words, the site's pitch is buy this creator a coffee, help them out. But also you could see it as a sort of corrupted abbreviation of co-finance, which is very clever. And I had never noticed that before. So thank you, whoever it was who commented on one of these videos. All right, so SPED is in fact raced, I think. I shouldn't say in fact, but most likely raced, as I guessed before, but didn't put in here. Computer processor parts. Oh, cores. In other words, a, like a multi-core processor. I see. Help wanted. Is it a bet? I don't, I don't completely see how that fits the clues. The clue, I should say. Sensitive part of the elbow. Oh, could it be funny nerve rather than funny bone? Because it's not the bone that causes that bizarre sensation. It's, it's a nerve. I mean, funny, sort of an odd one because funny is still idiomatic, obviously isn't scientifically accurate, but I suppose it's, it isn't actually wrong. It's just sort of a slangy way of referring to it. Whereas marsupial or star, or sorry, 
bear or star is actually incorrect. So they're being corrected. Whereas funny isn't incorrect. It's just, it's just an informal way of referring to the phenomenon. Anyway, preposterous, daft, funny nerve. That is an absolutely daft thing to say. Next time someone hits their funny bone or whatever the nerve that is, say, hmm, hit your funny nerve and see how they look at you. They'll, they'll look at you like you're daft. It's found near a trap. Not sure. Lean into vocal. Sally Blank, English tea cake. Um, is it Sally Dunn? Beside the point. Oh, tangential. Right. With 51 across, something to read. Oh, the riot act. You read somebody the riot act, which is uh, which means you're really giving them hell. I don't even know if the riot act is. I only know that from sort of pop culture dialogue. I don't even know if the riot act is a is an act that remains in force. Maybe it does. I don't know. Passed out. Ah, it is meted out, but it's... I kept focusing on meted, which is incorrect. It is dealt. You dealt cards. You passed out the cards. Home to the oldest continuously functioning university in the Americas since 1551. It must be Lima, Peru, which means the thing that stands on a table is indeed a lamp. Lima, Peru. I'll have to look that up. That's really interesting. I'm very interested. Okay. Riot Act. Let's fill that in. To needle someone is to taunt them. Sorry, I'm sort of rushing through at this point because I do really want to go get this thing out of my eye, whatever it is. Michelle, who is FIFA's female player of the century. It looks like it could be Acres, doesn't it? Uh, headwear made from GP Joppa fibers. Ah, this must be referring to a Panama hat, and it must be the case that it's not from Panama. It's from Ecuador. That's great. What a nice... This is a really fun theme. Uh, ditto, oh, ditto marks. Yes, of course. When you see these uh, quotation marks like this, what it means is same as the previous, same as the thing that's directly above or, or whatever. Oh my God. Tightness of, oh wait, oops, I spelled hat wrong because yes, this is Rhea, which I recognized. Tightness, tightness of myth is Rhea, but uh, I put Ecuador Pat in there. Seems like a children's character, Ecuador Pat. Store near Rockefeller Center, familiar, familiarly, um, probably Saks Fifth Avenue. Sporty vehicles, I think are oots, in other words, utility vehicles, oots. Actress TV host Palmer, Kiki Palmer, I guess. Uh, freshness is sass, and that fits with oots. It's found near a trap. Um, uh, so I'm not sure I've had shade akin to turquoise. Ah, it is aqua. That was one of my guesses. Teal and aqua, I think, were the two things I guessed. Lead into vocal. Aqua vocal? Equa vocal? Why am I not getting that? Why am I not seeing what these are? Boy, I'm just I'm almost ready to go flush out my eye, and I just can't see the end of this. Um, okay, let's see, look at this again. Sally Blank, English Tea Cake. It's not done. Sally Lunn, I think, maybe? It's found near a trap. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so your, tra your trap, is it trapezius? This muscle, or, or whatever it is, I don't know, tendon maybe, that uh, sort of runs down your clavicle is your trap. And so this is referring also to a sort of, I don't know, muscle or tendon or something. So this is deltoids, I guess. Yes, there it is. Okay. And so that's the Thursday puzzle. Um, sorry for my distracted eye rubbing throughout there. I'm going to go take care of that in a moment. Uh, this was a, this was a really clever theme. I don't know how on earth you get these, these bizarre phrases like funny nerve shooting meteor, koala marsupial and Ecuador hat into a crossword, but well done to Jake Halperin for pulling it off. A fun theme in the sense that I really, it took me a while. I sort of started to scratch at the edges of what it, of what it was. Um, I, I guess uh, the shooting and shooting star and the marsupial and symbol of Australia. And I think the reason, I think the thing that slowly pushed me towards the um, proper interpretation of the theme was that the shooting part here was very much part of an ordinary phrase, shooting star that I recognized, whereas marsupial 
was clearly more a more a koala. Koala is obviously a symbol of Australia. I mean, that's pretty commonly known, but our marsupial is obviously a more formal way of referring to it. So the ones that we started to to get at were the the sort of informal part of the original phrase, and then the more formal part of the corrected phrase, um, the uh, correction of the misnomer. And I think that helped. I think that it happened to be those two sort of opposite functions in the theme helped move us towards the theme. And Ecuador hat, that's great. Um, really, really clever. Um, and funny nerve. Just a, it's a, a good theme. I really enjoyed that theme. I liked learning that the oldest continuously functioning um, university in the Americas is in Lima. I'll have to look, read about that. That's pretty interesting. Um, had a few sports answers, but nothing that completely um, went up against the sports knowledge that I lack because um, I got some crosses. Although I guess this this might be a tough corner. I could see Rondo not being very obvious to some people. I could see Sater not necessarily being obvious with this fawn lookalike. And then if you don't know the sports player here, then you know I could see that being a tough corner. I definitely had some some resistance there, but I did enjoy this puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, if you do enjoy this series, you should subscribe to it so that you see these videos as they go up every day. You could tell a friend as well because they might also like it. It seems like this has been going, making the rounds a bit recently on social media, which has been great. I'd love to keep that going. Um, and, uh, and finally, if you're particularly enjoying this series and you would like to contribute to its ability to continue going forward, then head over to my coffee or Kofi page uh, as linked in the description underneath the video, and you can make a small donation of your choice. You can toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks on a recurring basis every month or simply as a one-off. Either way, I very much appreciate it. And thank you especially to those people who have signed up for a recurring donation. That really does mean a lot to me. So uh, thank you for joining me for this Thursday puzzle. I had fun. I hope you had fun. I hope you're moving towards your ability to improve at the crosswords, or you may already be an expert crossword solver. Um, and I hope you join me tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. Until then, have an excellent Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.